Okay, hey Jamira, I just want to make this quick video so, uh, to show you a quick and easy way that we can use Excel to reorganize the data that we take from Deputy and put it in a format that's acceptable for Crescent to process the payroll for NOLA protection. So as I'm sure you're aware of, this is the data set that is exported from Deputy into Excel. And we're first going to start by creating a pivot table. And the way that we do that is you need to make sure that you click inside of this data set. It can be anywhere in here. It does not matter. And Excel is going to do a wonderful job of recognizing that this entire data set is what you want to import into your pivot table. So we're going to do that now. Um, like I said, click anywhere in here and you're going to go to the insert tab on the top of your ribbon and you're going to click on pivot table. And as you can see, it is put this green dotted line around this entire data set. So you know that it's all going to be imported. So we're just going to click OK on this, and Excel is going to create us a new tab that I like to rename Pivot Table. All right. And so as long as you're clicked into this Pivot Table, you can see over here on the right, all of those column headers are now Pivot Table fields. And we're going to use this to create in our tables and, and, and reorganize that data in a useful form. So what I like to do first is to figure out what hours the employees worked. So I'll start by taking, let's see, let's take our last name and we'll drag it down here to the rows section. And then we'll take our employee name and we'll drag it underneath last name. It's very important that you put it underneath the last name because Crescent's form has the employees organized by last name, whereas Deputy exports them organized by their alphabetically by their first name. So by putting the last name first, you're taking all of these employees, as you can see, and we're organizing them by their last name. So then you wanna take their total hours. You wanna drag that to values. And as you can see now, you have each employee here and you have the total hours that they worked for that week. It looks a little jumbled up right now. A way that I like to fix that is by going up here to the design tab in the pivot table tools section. And if you click on subtotals and you click do not show subtotals, it will kind of, as you can see, the subtotals have now disappeared. And it's just a way of cleaning that up and making it more easily it makes it easier to read when we're going to go type this data in in just a little bit. So after we do that, I like to highlight starting with the first employee all the way down. And we're going to highlight all these people's hours. All right, I don't normally include the grand total. So we have everybody included. We're gonna right click and copy. I like to create a new tab. I like to name it hours. This is going to be our hours tab. I usually start in cell A4 and I will right click and this is important. You want to paste a special paste. You want to paste their values and source formatting. 
values and source formatting is what we're going to do. Um, to make that look better, you can double click on the column width and it will auto fit. You can merge these top two cells and we'll name it. We'll name that week one hours. And just so it looks better, we'll increase the font. Give it a color. All right. So we have week one hours. Now this is their total hours, but our objective is to parse out how many regular time hours each employee worked and how many overtime hours each person worked. And we can do this with a simple formula in Excel. And we can just type it in right here for Albert Lloyd or Lloyd Albert and we can copy it down and it'll it'll do it all for us. So let's let's go right here and let's type in RT for regular time. Type in OT for overtime and these are going to be our columns. Let's just All right. So what you can do is if you come right here to the very first value, we're going to use an if statement formula. It's very simple. I'm going to show you how it goes without going into too much detail. Really, uh, what you do is you establish a logical statement, and then you're going to have a value if true and a value if false. And then it goes like this. You're going to type equals if for our logical test, we're going to say if B5, which is this first value, we're going to say if B5 is greater, sorry about that, please forgive my typos, we're going to say if B5 is greater than 40, comma, then we want our regular time to be 40. We're going to put another comma, and we're going to say for if it's false, we want the answer to just stay at B5. So we're gonna say if parentheses B5 is greater than 40, comma, 40, comma, B5, end parentheses, and we'll enter that. So now we, you can see that we have taken our regular time is maxed out at 40, but he worked for 48 hours 48.89 hours. So to find out our overtime, we're going to do another if statement. So we're going to say if B5 is greater than 40, comma, then we want to do, we want to take B5 and subtract 40. And if that's false, we want to say zero in parentheses. So that is equals if, open parentheses, B5 greater than 40, comma, B5 minus 40, comma, zero. And we'll say enter. So as you can see, we have now taken that total time of 48 hours and we have separated out 40 hours of regular time and 8.89 hours of overtime. So now we can take this formula and we can copy it down with both of these. And you can see that it has, it has taken everybody's hours and, and separated regular time and overtime. Now, something else I like to do is I don't like all these zeros. I think it's kind of messy. So another way we can clean that up is we can click right here on the file tab up in your ribbon. We'll scroll down to options. If you go to the advanced tab on your left and you scroll down to the display options, display options for this worksheet, we want to unclick the checkbox 
that says show a zero in cells that have zero value. We'll uncheck that and you'll see that all these zeros now are, are gone. They disappeared and, and it looks much cleaner because now we're going to take this column that was their total hours. We're going to right click it and press hide. This sheet is now ready to be printed for data input on the Crescent form. You just go down the list to each employee and you're going to type, okay, uh, Lloyd Albert worked 40 regular, 8.89 overtime, down to the next. Uh, Latanya Allen worked 40 regular time, 20, point, 20 and a quarter overtime. And you're going to continue down that list. So this list is now ready to be printed as is, and it's a very quick and easy way without having to calculate the individual regular time and overtime hours. It's all done for you. Now, the next thing that we have to do is we have to figure out which people are getting per diem for the, the productions or the security positions that, that get per diem. So we can go back to our pivot table and we can click anywhere in our pivot table. And what we first want to do, and, and the reason I'm saying you have to click in this pivot table is if you click outside, if you watch on the right side of the screen, it's going to disappear. And you're going to be like, oh, no, what happened to my pivot table? The only way to bring that back or the, the, the easiest way to bring that back up is to just click inside of it. And it will automatically pull your fields and everything back up. So we're going to click inside of it. We're going to go over here to values. If you just click it and say remove field, that's gone. We want to keep the last name and employee name where they are in the rows. But now we want to, we want to bring our area name and our location code down. So I'm going to take the area name soon as I find it. All right, area name. We're going to drag that down to our filters. And then we're going to take our location code. And we're going to pull that in values. And you'll see that it changes to count of location code. And that's important because if you look over here at our pivot table, you can see these are effectively days how many different days they worked at a, at a different location. So well, I'm gonna show you what, what we're gonna do with that. So we established a filter. And if you click right here, you'll see it's, it now says area name. If you click this down arrow, it, right now it has them all selected. So if you select, select the multiple items, let's make this bigger. These are all our different jobs at NOLA. <coughs> Excuse me. And we want to find the ones that get per diem. So I believe in this list, it looks like the ones that get per diem, just off the top of my head, are Oshner. Nope, not that one. We're going to do... Oshner Homo, if I'm not mistaken, and S1 Railroad. All right, I think that's it. And, and you know better than I do. So let's click OK. Now what that's done, and it said everyone who worked on those jobs, this is how many days they worked on those jobs throughout the week. And you know we have we give $24 of per diem for each day. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna highlight with the first employee again, ending with the last value, right click, copy, and we're gonna add a new tab. Let's name this tab per diem. I'll just do PD for short. 
So again, I'll go down to A4. I will right click, and this is again where we need to do a special paste. We want to paste our values and our source formatting. You need to paste values. I like the source formatting because I like that it's indented and it looks nice. If we double click, we can auto fit again. And we'll, uh, let's just merge these and we'll write uh, week one for DM. Let's increase the font again. We'll give it a different color, just so when you print it out, it looks nice and it's easy to enter. Um, so what we're gonna, what we need to do is figure out how much per diem each one of these employees got for the week. So the way we're gonna do that is just by multiplying by the amount of dollars, which is 24. So we're gonna say equals B5, which is this first value, times 24, enter. So now they're getting $96, which is reasonable. That, that, or that, that sounds right, right? If they worked four days times 24, they got 96. We're just gonna copy that down again. And let's see, I wonder if we can hide this. Yeah, so let's hide that. Let's just sorry. Okay. Anyways, this is this is the data you're gonna use. And if you want to clean it up again, you can go to file options, advanced, scroll down to display options again for this worksheet. We'll take away the zeros. And again, you're going to be focusing on this amount. This is their days. This is their dollar amount. So this sheet is ready to print as well. So what do we do after we print? We need to input this data onto the Crescent payroll sheet. So what I've done is I have here a blank sheet that I normally send in. Let me grab this blank form. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Okay. I have here the blank crescent roll form, uh, crescent payroll form that they want. And the data needs to be put in. But I have added over here some extra column headings for week one regular time, week one overtime, week one per diem. Then I have done the same thing for week two. And these are just, you know, the two weeks, the two weeks in the pay cycle. And then I've added also a total column, a total section. This is total regular time, total overtime, and total per diem. I'm gonna show you what we do with that. So what I like to do before I get started is delete everything, or not delete, but just hide all these columns except for the name. So I'll just select all these. Um, let's see, I'll select all these and just right click and hide. So let's zoom in. And so now we just go down the list. So we'll go find our printouts. Let's see, we start with Lloyd Albert with 40 hours of regular time, 889 of overtime. Latanya Allen has 40, 20 and a quarter. Oops, I'm sorry, that was the wrong person. Latanya Lat Allen is 40, 20 and a quarter. Um, then we have Mark Allen. And 
you just go down the list with each person and just do like that. Uh, let me grab this other file. I have actually already done this. So let's stop sharing. Let's go to this one. Okay. So what I've done here, actually, let's see, we would have, we would have started out with all of these deleted or hidden, I'm sorry. So this is where we would have left off. You would have You'd, you'd input everybody for week one, and you can even hide these if you wish. Um, you'll input everybody down for week two. And so then we need to add everybody for the total. So the way that I like to do that is I'll just click under this total. For regular time, I'll say equals uh, week one plus week two, enter. I'll do the same thing with overtime equals week one plus week two. And we'll just copy this down. I didn't do everybody. I just did the first page just as an example. So now we have calculated each of these employees total for the two week pay, pay cycle period. We've calculated their total regular time, their total overtime. And then of course you would do the same thing with the per diems here. So you would, you would input the per diems, input the per diems for week two, and then add the two together for the total. And now all that's left to do is to copy and paste these values um, beside each employee. So what I like to do is click this triangle up here. That selects the entire worksheet. Uh, if you go to the format button in the cells group on the home tab and you click that format button, you got to hide, unhide. And we want to unhide the columns in this entire worksheet. So that's going to bring everything back. So now, if you click and copy and paste, just click and drag all this, copy. Again, here, you want to paste the values. Uh, you don't really want to paste the formatting in this. So if you just paste values, it'll keep the formatting of this Crescent payroll form like they want it. So we just want to paste those values uh, and, th and then do the same thing for the, the overtime. Just, just doing some of the people. I'm sorry. So let's paste these values. And there you go. Now you have each employee with all of their overtime for the two weeks and all of their regular time for the two weeks. You would do the same thing for the per diem uh, during Thanksgiving and Christmas. You could do the same thing uh, with this holiday hours column. And then for the uniform deductions column, you'll just go through and as needed, you will determine the uniform deduction as you're well aware of. And that's it. That is all there is to it. Uh, the only exception to that would be the salaried people that we have on the payroll. Those will need to be changed after the fact, or you can copy and paste 
up until uh, before and after. So you'll you'll paste this section and you'll skip this line. You'll pull this data over to this to this section. You know, all the way to the next salaried person, and you'll do that, and so on and so forth. And you know, there's various ways that you could go about fixing that. All right, and then of course you could take all these and either hide them or delete them after, and it's ready to be sent in. So that will conclude my tutorial video of how I, one of the ways that I like to do it, and I hope that you find this video useful. And I thank you for your time.